If you've been a Christian for a minute, you probably have a go-to Bible. Not just like your favorite physical one, although there's a bunch, right? Hardcover, softcover, goat skin, multiple bookmarks, multiple colors. You have study Bibles, reference Bibles, Spanish Bibles, children Bibles. And even so, at the end of the day, I usually just end up using this. The point is we have a lot of Bibles, not just different Bibles with different covers or for different audiences. We have a lot of translations of the Bible. Just a generation ago, this wasn't really a thing. King James ruled the day. Yeah, that Bible that sounds Shakespearean to us today, but was written in the language of the people at the time. But this story is not about all the translations of the Bible. It's about where these Bibles are printed. If you look inside the cover of your Bible, you will most likely find that it was printed halfway around the world in China. And that's significant because the Chinese Communist Party is known for persecuting Christians. The same country that prints the Bible for the entire world doesn't want it to reach the hands of its own people. But even then, that's not necessarily what's happening in China today. This is a story about how persecution in China is heading in a new direction. They're not trying to destroy Christianity, they're trying to rewrite it. Today, China accounts for about 15% of all economic activity in the world, most of which is manufacturing, which explains why growing up, a lot of my toys have this little sticker somewhere. But a big part of manufacturing is printing of all kinds, books, apparel, signage, and yes, Bibles. A lot of Bibles are printed in China. Amity Printing Company, the largest Bible production base in the world, produces an average of 70 Bibles per minute. To date, they have printed more than 250 million Bibles. Printing a Bible isn't easy, and Bible publishers rely heavily on China's expertise. They know what they're doing. But the question remains, why would a country so set against Christianity be willing to print the very book they don't want their citizens reading? We could say it's a matter of trade, dollars, the bottom line. After all, three out of four Bibles printed in China are produced for export. If you're the manufacturing powerhouse of the world, why not make a buck? But the answer is not that simple. The biggest thing the Chinese Communist Party is after is not just money, but control. Protestant Christianity in China is on the rise. It's estimated that there are more Protestants today in China than in Germany or France. Generally speaking, there are two very distinct churches in China. There's the grassroots movement of churches, usually called underground or house churches. Christians who attend these churches do so in secrecy, even changing location and being very careful about who they meet with. But there's also the state-sanctioned church, mostly represented through the China Christian Council and the Free Self Patriotic Movement. You can guess which one of these the Chinese government is cool with you being a part of. China is okay with you being a Christian as long as it's on their terms. They don't mind if you have a Bible as long as it's their Bible. In 2019, the CCP announced that they were working on a new translation of the Bible, adapting it to be more in line with their beliefs and systems. They no longer want to simply repress religion, but transform it into a new version of Christianity. Let me give you an example of what I mean. In 2020, Chinese Catholics found a government-published textbook on professional ethics and law, quoting a known passage of the Bible, John 8, 3, 11. You've heard this story before, when Jesus stops the crowd from stoning the adulterous woman. Let's read their translation. The crowd wanted to stone the woman to death as per their law, but Jesus said, let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Hearing this, they slipped away one by one. Okay, so far, not so bad, but let's keep reading. When the crowd disappeared, Jesus stoned the sinner to death, saying, I too am a sinner. But if the law could only be executed by men without blemish, the law would be dead. This is not just a bad translation. This is a complete rewrite. This new ending changes the entire story, so much so that the Jesus we know is no longer recognizable. So the point is, ask yourself, what would the church look like if the only Bible they had was one where Jesus stoned 
the adulterous woman instead of forgiving her. This is a danger facing the Chinese church. If they get the wrong Bible, and they get the wrong gospel, and they get the wrong Jesus. The Chinese Communist Party knows what they're doing. They know the power that religious texts have over people. The Bible, most of all, they know that a church without a Bible is no church at all. And if you take away the church, you take away the strength of Christians, which then hinders the ability of Christians to multiply. If you go after the Bible, you go after the lifeblood of Christianity. We can give thanks for the freedom that many of us enjoy in our home countries. And even with all the challenges, most of us are not worried about losing access to our copies of the scriptures. And the Bible is so precious that it's worth doing everything we can to make sure it's accessible to everyone. And that includes our brothers and sisters in China who are in danger of receiving a Bible that is no Bible at all.